Bonsoir. How are you, dear friends? We are building the most inspiring and phenomenal communities of wine lovers. As we all know, wine is the catalyst of the greatest discussion. We'll be talking wine, but of course food, and everything that touches all our nation and senses. Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends. This is JCB Live, happy hour. Tonight, we're gonna to be having an amazing guest. We're gonna travel around the world. This is a very exciting time because we're gonna to travel to an amazing country, a big inspiration to the world from literally many, many thousands of years. This is a country that everyone needs to visit for inspiration, culture, aspiration, and many more. The young lady we're gonna meet, Dan Dan, is an incredible entrepreneur, a fabulous businesswoman, very charming, extremely successful in whatever she does, from wine to lifestyle, and of course, to our favorite thing in the world, food. She started an incredible restaurant with resounding success in the heart of Shanghai, and we're gonna be pairing our wines with her tonight. I cannot wait to introduce you to the fabulous, gorgeous Dan Dan. I hope you like the noise. The noise makes our guests come to life. Dan Dan, bonjour. Comment ça va? Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Zhu Hui. Zhang Charles, welcome to Zhu Hui again. This is our chef, Wei, our big chef. So welcome everyone here to our restaurant. Wow, look at the dish. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Wei. And we are going to have the last most important ingredient, our truffle. So Wei is going to help us to put the ingredient on the top of the uh, pork. Wow, you can smell it. Wow. Thank you, thank you, Wei. Hi, Charles. Hello, thank you. It's so good to see you. Yes, great to see you too. You are looking fabulous in this gorgeous environment. Santé. Thank, thank you. Oh, you started already with the red one. It's okay. <laughs> I know the, 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 the 
always make our guests appear. So I'm always starting with JCB 69 or 21. So you know the flamboyance, the sound, it's a celebration. Yes, yes, that's the best welcome. <laughs> Thank well, you. I'm so delighted. So then, then tell me a little bit about your incredible life as far as being born an hour and a half from Shanghai. How was it in China and how is it today? Well, yes, thank you first. And uh, I was born in uh, a very small town around Shanghai. It's about a one and a half hour drive. And then I was really born and raised there till 18 years old. So I, I was a very traditional Chinese girl, yes. So what is a traditional Chinese girl? Well, we listen to parents and we study well, we act well, you know, we, we, we know study very much, but nothing else. <laughs> That's very traditional Chinese girl. Your brain is so large. I always admire to get into your mind and to discover how much you know. So then how did you decide to go and branch out from your family and go to the big city, to Shanghai, which is one of the biggest and most amazing city on the planet? Right. So when I was 18 years old, I decided to study abroad. So I went to Canada, uh, 18 years old, and then I spent seven years in Canada, university, master degree and the work. And then when I come back to China, I will decide, I will try to see which city I'm going to stay. And then one is close to my hometown. Another is Shanghai is really amazing. It's old fashioned and it's modern. It's combined together. So it attracted me very much. So we decided we will go to Shanghai. Yeah. That's amazing. So you fell in love with wine as well back in China or did you enjoy wine when you were in Canada too? I was in Canada because, you know, Canada is cold and um, there's nothing to do except study. So we try to discover what is fun. And I was in Toronto. You know, Niagara Falls is about one hour drive from Toronto. So we drive to Niagara Falls all the weekends, every weekend. We, first we stay the- Gambling in the casino or would you go to the wineries? That's at the very beginning. That's very, at the very beginning. But later on, we find out there's beautiful side views and then beautiful wines. Before the wine, before the red wine, I know first is the ice wine because Canada is very famous of the ice wine. So we first go to visit the ice wines, drink ice wines. And then we discuss, discover there's more than ice wine. So that's why I fall in love with wines. So that was your first attraction. Then you went back to China and you said, I want to be in the world of wine and food. That was what happened right away when you came back? Right. When I come back, there's a, a very interesting uh, job opportunity for me. They only sell American and Canadian wines. That's not usual in China 10 years ago. So I was really interested. And then I joined the company. In 2012, I went to Napa. I went to Raymond Deloche. I just fall in love with the wine and with the winery. And until now, I'm always doing the wines and the business with Raymond Deloche and Bosse family. Well, let me, let me welcome you then with a new Chardonnay, which you have behind you as well. Oh, yes. It's LVE. Because I know John Legend as well loves China, has performed many times all over China. And what we're enjoying tonight together is the Napa Valley Chardonnay from LVE. Yes. So maybe you should define that wine in three words. Only three words. Well, first one is passion. It's, it's really like when I open the bottle, when the wine in the glass, I can smell the California sunshine. It's passion and uh, uh, like it's it. and then it's love. I can feel that the combination about the music, it's art. It's a piece of art. I just love it. So well said. So well spoken. By the way, you need to tell us, 
who makes you who you are today? Because you're such an accomplished young lady and such an entrepreneur, as many of our guests will discover shortly. How do you account it for? Is it your mother, your father, your upbringings? Tell us. Yes, I think um, many people actually. First of all, my parents, because they, they give me really good, they raised me up very well. They protect me before I go to Canada. And then when I become 18, they ask me, what is the decision? Do you want to uh, become one of the, uh, uh, the students in China, like go to the university? You know, all the Chinese students, we need to have a really extreme examination to get into the university. I said, mm, maybe no, I wanted to make my own choice. And then my parents, are, they are so supportive. They let me make my own uh, decision. So I went to Canada. And then- Amazing as a young lady of 17, 18 years old to go so far away from your parents. Would you advise that to a lot of young ladies at that time of age? Does it open your mind to a level that is unparalleled? Well, I think uh, if your mind is mature enough, like if you have your decision in your mind already, I think it's ready to go. It's all about ourselves. But some of the kids, like they, their parents make the decision. I don't think it's a good idea. But we, if we have the decision, it's, it's totally fine. So what was your epiphany to say to yourself, I'm going to get into the restaurant world, I'm going to design recipe. I'm going to become a big influencer in China. Uh, you know, when I would visit, when I would, uh, when back in 2012, when I visited the Raymond Winery, and we had an amazing tasting in the Crystal Cellar with uh, uh, Stephanie. And then at the, that time, I find amazing pairing wine with food. So when I come back to China, even I still working for the company, the wine company, I was dreaming about, I wanted to show like the Chinese food pairing with the wines. So that's the idea coming from. That's a brilliant idea. So I know we're going to tour now your restaurant, which is going to be so exciting. But now what makes wine and Chinese food go so well together to your opinion? Well, I think especially California wine. Uh, California wine is very fruit forward, it's very passionate, and it's great to pair with the Chinese food. Uh, the dish we made in, um, later on in our restaurant, the pork with the uh, salty egg, that one, the pork is a little bit sweet, and the salty egg is a little salty, and then they, the flavor combines together together with the California Cabernet Sauvignon, they match perfectly. I love the idea of the two together. This is so exciting. And this is something maybe we in the West can replicate. Do you think it's a recipe you would be willing to share so we could try to make it in our own kitchen? Of course, of course. I will send very detailed recipes and please show me when you make the dish. Well, I'm not sure I'm willing to share the result because I'm sure JCB in the kitchen is not ever a success. So maybe I'll get Gina to do it and then it would look beautiful. Wow, it's so going to be a restaurant now. Can we get a quick tour? Of course. Fantastic. So chuk, chuk, chuk. Now we're working in the restaurant. So we're doing yes. the whole thing. And yes. now I'm going to ask you another question. So then, then after this amazing tour, very inspirational, great young chef, absolutely aspirational dish, you know, what an association, what makes Chinese food so great at large? Give us your opinion about the world of Chinese food. I've always been a fanatic of Chinese food, being born and raised in France. As you know, we have hundreds of thousands of French in France, restaurant that are Chinese, what makes the food so unique? Right. So China is big. From the north to south, east to west, all the dishes are so different. And it's unique because of the ingredient, like 
in Shanghai, we have very special food ingredients. And uh, for example, in south of uh, China, the ingredients are very different. So in China, we can, we can enjoy all different kinds of great dishes. And uh, the, they combine together, when we combine all the dishes together, different flavors from all China, it makes amazing and very interesting. That's right. So the vast of the country and the, the regional food is quite amazing. Yeah? Yes. So what do you like to pair the most with Chinese food in general? You said California wines, but yes. what style of wine? What flavor profile? Well, um, we pair, for example, we pair rosé with our hot pot. Do you, you know, Sichuan hot pot, it's hot. And then um, when we pair with the cool, a little bit sweet rosé, it's perfect. And then for the Shanghai food, it's a little bit sweet. And then we can pair with either Chardonnay or like a Merlot will be great. And some not that too powerful Capsunyo, they pair really good. So different uh, Chinese dishes will pair well with different food. Or uh, for example, the dumpling or roasted duck, it will be great with the Pinot Noir. So yeah. What, what is the big trend lately? I know your restaurant has been very innovative with cutting edge recipe. I was very fortunate to be invited by you, you know, six months ago and we had an incredible time. So what are the trends in China in terms of food direction today? Right, and uh, it's my pleasure to have you and Patrick Lian in the restaurant six years, uh, six months ago. I've already missed you, so Thank please you. welcome back again. As and, soon as we can, we are coming back. Yes, and then uh, for the trend of the food in China, I think uh, before um, 50 years ago, Chinese are, we don't have fridge, so we try to save food by itself and we make it very heavy taste. But right now, because it's easy to store food, it's easy to get the fresh food. So right now, we more into the food itself, the yeah. ingredient itself. So lighter, but fresher, and not too much resp uh, spices. And then just that the food say word by itself. What is your favorite Chinese dish besides the one we just saw, which is incredible with wine from China that you adore in addition to what we've seen? Well, it's very hard to say which one is my favorite, but uh, my personal, uh, very personal, I love hot pot. It's yes. because hot pot, it's very passion and then we can share food. Like we are a big family together. Every time we have hot pot, we just like a, a, a whole family. We are sharing food. I just love the memory of my childhood. So if I have to pick one, it will be hot pot. I love it. So other young Chinese people having less spices you mentioned and their chef are cooking with less hot sauces and hot spices. Uh, yes, but the different regions for uh, Shanghai and for northern China, for uh, east of China, yes, we we more into the food. But for example, the uh, for the west of China, they are very high humidity. They still need spices to uh, to to make themselves feel better. Yes, so because China is so big, wide, and then. It's very different. That's right. It's a big continent on its own. Now, Dan Dan, uh, you have a lot of great friends. I've met many of yours, great, uh, great friends. They're really starting to like wine. What is the trend of fine wine in China now? Uh, it's becoming, like wines are becoming into everyday life of Chinese people. I we started- want to hear that. Yes, I started to do wine uh, 10 years ago. And then the most job we do is to educate people how to enjoy wine. You know, Chinese people love to bottom up. 
we love to gambay. And then 10 years ago, we mix uh, spray. Um, you know, we mix sometimes Coca-Cola with wine to mix wine <laughs> easily drinking. But now people, especially Shanghai is a, such a mature market. People will enjoy wine every day. And it's like daily, daily life drinking. And in our restaurant, people will open a bottle of wine to pair with our food. So it's great. Yeah, it's here to stay. You think it's not a trend. It's established now and people will continue to drink wine. Yes, yes. It's exciting to see because, you know, I feel the Chinese food is so complex and so diverse and so unique and interesting and eclectic that wine, obviously, and all the different grape varieties will go very well with food. So I've always enjoyed wine and Chinese food together. So I'm glad to hear this. Now, a touch on the domestic production. China is making great wines these days. Tell us a little bit about what you feel about the evolution of, of Chinese wines. Well, Chinese wine business uh, industry are doing a great job recently. Uh, we realize we are actually China is not old world or new world. We make wine. We make wine from long history, but we didn't make it good. So right now, <clears throat> there's a, several regions are really great region like Ningxia. So there's a, a lot of uh, wine lovers. They they are first of all they are the wine drinker lovers, and then they feel. We wanted to have really good Chinese wines. So they go to the good uh, uh, regions mm -hmm. to plant the vines and to make great wines. And it's growing very fast. So big potential in the future. I think so. I think so. It's just like Chinese tea. By the way, I'm uh, drinking my Chinese tea in the morning too. And uh, you know, China are so successful in Chinese tea. And so I think so will the wine do. Like we, we, want, we love to enjoy the life. So yeah, That's I right. believe. And all the senses. So then, then we've known each other for a long time and I've been impressed by your talent and inspiration to many others. You have your own wine company, you have your own restaurants. Uh, what advice do you give to young entrepreneurs and specifically women to really flourish in China and in the world of food and wine. Well, I don't, I, I, I don't think I'm uh, good enough to give the suggestions. But my experience is Way too modest. Yeah, to love it first. Like you, we have to love it. I love wine. I love food, and then I can have all my passions in my job. So try to find what you like. And then it just enjoy it. It will like I met you, John Charles and Leanne Patrick. We this is because I love the wine, so it makes us together. That's right. So finding your passion, but how do you start your own business? Sometimes many ladies tell me as a woman it could be intimidating, specifically the world of wine or even food. So what is your advice to, to get going? into that specific field? Well, we need a really good help from uh, like friends uh, or partners. I love to eat food, but I don't cook at home. I'm really bad cooker. I, I don't use my kitchen. So oh, I have a restaurant, so that's as easy. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm going, I have a restaurant because I don't cook. So it's very important to get help from partners and um, we are good at our different uh, fields. I'm good at wine, he's good at uh, food. So we can combine our uh, advance together and then we make it well. So I think uh, we, we all need very professional help from partners, from, from friends. Yeah, we cannot be on our own. So Personal question, you're a great wine taster. Do you think women have more talent in tasting wine than men? I think so. Yes. I, think so. <laughs> I don't take it 
offensively at all. I knew the answer because <laughs> I've been surrounded all my life with great ladies who are incredible talent. From Leanne, who we know, to my sister, to my mother, to my grandmothers, to you, and Stephanie Putnam, obviously, who makes the next wine we're going to be trying, the Raymond generation. So why is that that women are so good at tasting wine? I think a woman is very sensitive. We know the difference. I, when I try to do the wine tastings with my clients, usually when I ask them, what did you get from the wine? Men, they will just bottom up. They say, oh, good, how her it means, wow, good wine. And then ladies, they will describe, describe like what is the difference between wine one and wine two? And what do I like? But men just enjoy the wine very, very much. They just, they, they just bottom up. So I think women are more sensitive. Very analytical. And they have the discipline to go through the analytics of the wines and, and so forth. Yeah, I could see that. So, yes. Brendan, what inspires you as a young lady in China today? Um, China has really great opportunities, especially like a city like Shanghai, Shenzhen. It changes every day. Um, like the road I drive every day from my home to, to my office, it, it can change if I, don't, I go out for business trip. When I come back a week later, I will see shops are changed. So there's a really great opportunities uh, in China. People work really hard, but at the t same time, we wanted to enjoy life better because we are uh, being a very difficult time, like 50 years old. My parents age, they, they've been suffering during that stage. So everyone try to enjoy life more. That's so, nice to hear. That's very nice to hear. So maybe on a different note, I want to have a toast to you and all the lady you inspire in China, because I know you have an enormous group of followers that admire you, that are with you and follow your thoughts and obviously your great food and your great wines. And we chose tonight the wine to enjoy is obviously generation. Why? Yes. Because it's what you love, Napa Valley, and five generation of winemakers, another great wine made by Stephanie Putnam and Kathy George. So five generation of winemakers. So I want to raise my glass then, then to your success and really your passion because we feel it. And your English is so good. No, I was very nervous about this because your English is perfect. I tried to catch up. No, no, no. So, Dan, Dan, cheers to you. Share with us, besides that beautiful piece of jewelry you have, thank you for wearing it. You look fabulous. Thank you. Tell us about your passion. Yes. Um, so, when we're drinking the wine, generation, um, all of my, it has a great story and uh, it has a, uh, Really, we just love the wine. It's complex and it lasts very long. And then my passion will be sharing what I love. Because when I drink, for example, when I wear the, the jewelry, people will ask me, wow, this is beautiful. Where did you buy it? Or well, I drink great wine. I will share my moments. I said, such a great wine coming from Raymond and then What's the story behind it? I want to share it. And people can feel my, feel my passion. And they, they wanted to ask me, Dan, Dan, where can I get it? So I wanted to share it. So your passion is to share your love of life and your interest, right? Yes. Which is wine, food, jewelry, fashion. This is very exciting. Now, what do you think people should know about China that they don't know when it deals with wine and food, specifically that topic? Right. Um, China are very open mind to the new stuff. Like, we have old, long tradition history, but 
at the same time, we are so open mind to all the new stuff. So anyone interested in China market about the wine or food, come to try. I think that's the best way. Absolutely. And what would you advise, when is the best time to come to Shanghai? Oh, Shanghai, uh, April, May, and then skip July, August, because that's the hottest season. And then September, October will be fabulous, November or so. So then, then, a few more moments of questions. What are your aspirations now? I did say your dream, that will be your next question, but your aspiration, where you are with your business, with your restaurant, with your food, what are those? Uh, I think um, because of very special moment of the world right now, because everyone, because of the virus, everything is slowing down. So right now for me is keep everything running, uh, as I can, it's um, trying to trying to uh, move the things goes well this year for me. Yes, because it's a very special timing of the whole world. Yes, well, congratulations for doing so because you're doing it very well. Now, is there a secret you want to share that you've never shared with anyone that all your fans would love to hear that you're willing to share? Actually, it's, it's a good question, but right now I just couldn't think. Maybe next time. <laughs> now, finally, what is your passion? Besides, besides, obviously, food and wine, in terms of your ultimate dream. Right. Um, so... Uh, when before I get married, my passion was only the job. We wanted to work hard to get success. But uh, after I have my kid, he's uh, six years old. So I wanted to balance my job and my family well. So right now, my passion is try to let my son enjoy wine, but not drinking it yet. He smells it. He can guess what is the smells from the wines? So yeah, I want to influence my son now. <laughs> That's a beautiful dream to have. Now, by the way, how do you guide him to identify the aroma in the wine? How do you do well, that? It's very interesting. When he was like uh, two years old, I asked him to smell the wine. He's like, oh no. And he said, he said no, no, no to me. And then slowly, I, I told him, try to see if you get maybe apple. And then he's trying, you know, kids know they are very sensitive. They really can get the smells. And uh, I, I would love to that her, uh, that him to smell the fruits, the flowers. So now he's, he's trying to learn, like not only from the wine, but from the, uh, from the life, he, when he go to the market, he will smell different fruits. That's marvelous. Now, maybe another question then, then. Yes. China has an amazing history. One of the most phenomenal. And you do, I do a lot of energy courses and I dive into the world of energy, yin and yang, feng shui, vibration, and all of the yes. above. What period of history is very interesting for people to study that fascinates you in the vast 7,000 years of history of China. Well, uh, yes, what you did, Zhang Shao, is the, uh, uh, like the feng shui or the way you're planning your, your minds. It's so similar to Chinese culture, how we do the farming. Uh, I think I... I'm bad at the history, but uh, I think since 3,000, like two, 3,000 years ago, Chinese people know the moon, the connection about the moon, the sun with the land. So your idea of doing the, the farming, the uh, vineyards are so much connected with the Chinese way. Like we know, we, we protect the land 
we, we wanted the land to be healthy and healthy. We don't, we don't want it to destroy it. And Chinese people just love the land. They love to, they love to see the connection between the sun and the moon. Yes. So I love that answer. Thank you so much, Dan Dan. This is really the connection as well I've had forever with China, who never change from the lunar calendar. And this is what we admire the most, as you said, in organic and specifically biodynamic farming that we practice at Raymond and all our wineries. We really follow, you know, the Chinese rhythm that you've kept. We've changed calendar, sadly, but we kept it not only in honor of China, but in honor of Mother Nature. So I'm delighted, Dan, then we could get together and you could meet all our friends. And I cannot wait for us to finally see each other yeah. again physically and to come to your yeah. restaurant. We're going to do a great dinner with all our wines and your incredible food. And please, congratulations again to the chef who really showcased an incredible dish. So Thank maybe you, John. Word for the world. Maybe two words for the world, Dan Dan. Uh... Thank you, and um, we love it, we enjoy it. I'm so happy, and during this special period of time, wine makes us happier. So thank, thanks, wine. Exactly, and, and you know, the globe and distances may separate us physically, but emotionally, thanks to wine, we are together. So then, then I raise my glass to you, to your son, to your family, to your success, and your continued phenomenal inspiration to all Chinese women and beyond. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we're looking forward to see you again in China. I cannot wait. And I'm going to do a gambe just for the oh. sake of it. I did it. Wow. Great. Thank you. Thank you, John Charles.